it is no doubt that um, modern web application developers were security experts work hand in hand to better secure um, web applications. Um, today, session will be probably looking at uh, something which is very important and um, critical for us to see. Uh, we're beginning to see the use of QR codes and authentication um, modern web applications, which is pretty cool, um, a bit decent and safe if the appropriate security mechanisms have been placed in, have been put in place to manage how that works. But if it's just a random one, um, obviously the attacker will always find these loopholes to play around this stuff. In today's session, welcome. We'll be covering QR jacking, and you can see the OAPS page loaded here. I will advise you pretty much read this stuff. Um, there is this little push between security and usability. Uh, if it's too stringent, too tight, then it's not very friendly, user friendly, and people do not want to use such an application. So, as security folks, we try to push between security and usability and find the perfect harmony that makes it good for users as well as keep it safe. Um, moving on, um, you have to read this uh, on your own. It's pretty cool that you understand how it works. Uh, I'll just go, go over to the attack flow. Now, this is how it works according to OAP's explanation. It's like I initiate a client-side QR session. Um, I have a private browser here. A perfect example would be to show you WhatsApp. If I haven't logged out yet, logged in there yet, let me see if I have. It will not. It's just trying to load it, so I'm just cancel. Okay, great. So I'm trying to log in WhatsApp, and you see I have this page. Now, um, nothing stops me as an attacker from cloning this page, although it's this page, a security, better security mechanism would be to ensure this page refreshes after a particular window. But if it's a static page, nothing stops me from cloning this page and serving this to my targets with the aim of being able to get them fished. Um, now, uh, we can see that attacker initiates the client's side QR session, just like I've shown you and clone the login QR code into a phishing website, which we're going to show you later on. It's like I sends the phishing page to the victim. Um, there are several techniques which that can be, that can be used to implement such social engineering, several of them which we're not going to be covering here today. The victim scans the code. In my case, the victim will scan this code, um, which will be served, not exactly this one, because I'm not cloning that page then the attacker gains control over the victim's account. Now it starts from there. Simple as it may sound, the attacker can move from there, understanding how the victim operates and find his way or probably a possible way to pivot into the entire network and owning that whole stuff. So let's quickly jump into this. I'll be using uh, the OAP QR jacking tool, which I'm just gonna clone from GitHub repo. Then we will do the installation walkthrough. Then also, um, because I want this to be able to uh, be served over the internet, I will be using port map IO to um, map a port which will be opened over the internet and more like simulating a phishing attack. I hope you're gonna love this content. Please, once again, do like our content, subscribe and turn on the notification button to get more cool stuff from us. Okay, let's get right into this. Okay, so we're using Git clone to clone the repo. Um, which is what we have, a copy the link, clone the repo. Then here we have the setup. I'm going to leave these links. Uh, you want to verify you have Python version 3 plus. So you can use the command Python, um, I think uh, capital V to check. Currently I'm running 2.7.8, but I'll have to upgrade this to version 3 point something, okay? So next we need to grab the latest uh, Gecko driver from the link given here is what we have here. And then um, I'm going to, because I'm currently using a Ubuntu server, so I'm going to go for the Gecko driver for Linux x64, is what I'm using currently. I'm going to grab this file into my local box. I'll save this. You should do the same, depending if you're using either Mac. This works for Mac, for Linux, any of them. Uh, for Windows, it doesn't. So you won't be able to use this in the Windows environment. Okay, so walking you through what I've done, basically, um, after downloading that, we use the tar command, as you can see here, um, xvzf to extract the executable, and we have it over there. 
then we decided to follow the instruction, which is what is required of you, except this last one, which is not necessary. Follow the instructions, you know, change the um, permissions, then move it into your um, local share, and as well as create that symbolic link. Then um, at this point, we're trying to, we cloned already. We just switched into the directory. We want to install the requirements. So I'm passing the first switch because I have two versions of Python on my Ubuntu server. So um, obviously that's true and error. At me, um, I'm not sure if I have the requirements. Oh, okay. I you CD into, uh, what's the CD into that? Then run that because in here I'll have the requirements. Uh, so I'm going to run that command again to install the requirements. And I'm, I'm forcing it to just use the required fashion, which is 5.3. Okay. So we'll wait for these to finish, then we'll get back into it. Okay, so we finished installing PIP, a couple of um, errors there, um, but um, we finished, then we trying to um, verify we ran this and uh, this returned. So we're going to see if this works. If it doesn't, we'll have to move over to the kernel Linux, which probably this is more stable on, to complete this uh, recording. Let's try it out. So we're just going to execute the command. And um, this seems to be okay. Hopefully it works. Uh, this, according to a review, it, it looks like the Metasploit framework or it simulates kernel like using the same command. I'm going to verify that. Just perfectly. Okay, so now that we got this thing running, let's do a little bit of um, social engineering. In here, we will look for the file. I'm going to see it into docs. Um, okay, that's not in the I'll see it into core. I think it's in the core. Then we'll look for the templates. I'll see it into templates. So we can do a bit of social engineering. I'm just going to use nano to open. Uh, Fishing templates, the HTML, and I will just make a bit modification, just a slight one. Um, right here, where I have, if probably you need a little bit of HTML knowledge to be able to play with this stuff. So I'm just going to change the defaults. We can see that uh, now you have the local server. I'm just going to clean that up, put something that looks like um, fishing templates, and I'll come back to you guys. Then. Okay, so we just made a few changes to this stuff. If I look at what we're doing, uh, basically it's Amazon shopping experience season. And you this QR code to win for Amazon gift card rewards. Oh man, that's a bad spelling. <laughs> what? Five fifty dollars Okay, that, that's pretty basic. Um, maybe that will fly. Uh, it's official, which is me anyways. So <laughs> we're going to save this thing out. Um, and exit this all right so that's the template which we're going to be working with and we'll start the server and serve that page okay now that we have this um, set up let's quickly go to port map now um, if you probably are wondering what port map is uh, I can say it's a redirector more or less like that so basically what it does is I'm trying to expose my local um, network my local system here to the internet and um, port map acts as a VPN, uh, if that's the right word, uh, to send me out. So more like uh, um, it's going to create, add me to their network and enable me to be able to send traffic to the internet from my local server. So um, doing this is basically simple. I can create new rules. Since I have an account, you need to sign up for an account anyways. And um, you can generate new rule. Uh, we can create the, oh, we have to create the configuration first. Okay, so we're going to create the configuration and um, then create a new rule to be able to expose our stuff out there. So basically, I'm trying to generate the um, configuration. I gave it the name Amazon Git, um, not a problem. <laughs> I'm going to work with TCP. Uh, we understand the difference between TCP and UDP, basically reliability. Um, it's an open VPN tunnel. They're giving us an instruction on how to go about this. So we'll be having this to be able to connect to the VPN. So we're going to generate this configuration file. Then we'll go ahead and probably stage this. Now that we have it generated, you can see it's over there. Some good form of encryption happening. We can download it. If you click download, you're going to download. I already did that. Then um, we can we can as well copy this to clipboard just to look at what it is. And we'll need this command to be able to run this. 
start that VPN. So I'm going to just copy this command. And I'll go to my terminal and open a new tab. I'm going to just to go into everywhere. <laughs> then I'll go to my, I think, uh, I mean, my downloads by default, I think. Oh, no. Okay. I'm just going to go some step back. Perfect. In my download, I'll have um, the OpenVPN file, which we've just collected. Let me verify that using the, I'm just going to go to download. I'm not look at it from my terminal now. <laughs> All right, so um, we should have it somewhere in here. I'm not sure. But I'm just going to check for my browser. Because it was downloaded. Okay, so it's Meta Incorporation. That's the name it's been given. Uh, it's good that we're working through. This is the file over here. So I'm going to run this thing and proceed with this. Okay, so we're just going to um, start the OpenVPN connection uh, since we have the file in that directory. And if it connects, we should have um, an IP address um, assigned to us. So sequence completed. If you've been following up on our triad in this video, this should be pretty easy for you to uh, replicate. So I have config, you can see I now have a turn zero IP, which is not for triad me. Anyways, this is the VPN IP. So which means I've been connected to their private network and I've been assigned an IP address. Hence, I can route to the internet from their private network. So let's go make this phishing bad boy pretty smooth and cool for our targets. Okay, so one more thing we have to do in port mapping, uh, in port map.io, is to create a mapping rule. So remember, we've already been exposed to the internet. So let's create a new rule. And um, our rule will be based on what we want this to be. So by default, give us a configuration, which is this, the VPN. And TCP, I think, will go for, uh, we cannot use HTTPS, it's a free account. But if you have a paid account, you can work with HTTPS. So we'll just go with HTTP. As they call it, <laughs> then we're mapping the host name to port map.io. Um, we will keep their random ports on our server. I think it will work. I do not have anything currently listening on 80, maybe 92, because I have stocks already on 80, 90, 80 is busy. We can add host header and even allow IPs. Let's say we're doing a targeted phishing. We have IPs that should be able to hit the server. We can point them in there. That would be pretty cool. So we can go ahead and create this. Just note the ports that we've worked with, 1892. We'll create this mapping rule. Then we can proceed with, now we have a new mapping rule over there. We can proceed with the attack. So going back to QR Jacker, we just need to uh, make a few changes. That's the option. Um, we show options. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> right. So we'll just make a few changes in here to change the ports which we have just created, 1892. So as you can see, um, just like Metasploit, um, we use the particular module. We can actually create more modules. I believe there will be more modules coming out, not just WhatsApp as we proceed um, on this. Then we can uh, change the ports to 1892, which is what we have mapped on our port map. And I think it's good to go. We can run this and go fish that user. Okay, so once again, our Ubuntu server ditched us, <laughs> failed. So we quickly switched to Kali Linux. We made things a bit spicy with the fishing and the fishlets. So we're going to see what it looks like. Uh, at the moment, we have started the program, it's running. So if we go back into port map, it means um, <clears throat> the user visits this and it redirects them to this. We're just going to copy this link and um, simulate the attack here quickly. Remember, we got this thing running in our Kali Linux. Let's try this out in our Ubuntu server and see if uh, we can get the user to um, be fished. <laughs> so I'm going to paste this in here, try to go to that link and see Okay, so we can see it loads the QRL jacker. 
uh, obviously we can take that out uh, just didn't pay attention to that i didn't take it out <laughs> okay that's sellouts all right so but we can see here here at amazon we are customer centric obviously we celebrate you with a 50 dollar gift card please scan this QR code your whatsapp and for privacy concerns do not share this with anyone so i probably should have removed that qr jack whatsapp thing there it's a sellout but anyways um it's just for demo purpose so let's go to our whatsapp and um, link the device and scan the code so currently i've got a bunch of linked devices on my uh whatsapp so i'm just going to remove some of them so i can free up space uh, to be able to do this stuff okay so let's get this bad boy rolling so i'm scanning the code attempting to see if um, i can fall prey to this um code is going to load again i'm going to try to scan the code watch if i'm a victim it's trying to load the code it might take a while because of the server delay but we'll just wait for that and see how that works okay so my scanning is done and over here you can see quickly got session on whatsapp module session saved successfully let's go interact with this session and see how it looks like <laughs> okay so let's try to interact with our session using the sessions command just like metasploits uh session we'll pass that sessions uh I'm spelling like I let's interact with session zero and see it starts an interactor. Uh, this probably will re redirect us to um, the browser. Let's wait for this to load. So we can see the pop up WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Pretty much, you see, there's an encryption happening there, right? HTTPS. That looks more like what it should be. WhatsApp legit. Nobody's going to probably pick this except. They are looking at the favicon there. <laughs> Obviously, that sells us out again. Now we can play around with that thing and change it a bit up to make it look smooth and legit, which is what uh, it should be, anyways. Okay, so I'm over here just for a POC. You can see my WhatsApp is open, anyways. So do not try to do anything stupid here. <laughs> so this is my WhatsApp. I'm going to stop this session here uh, because I do not want to further reveal privacy in my whatsapp so um a quick closing remark um some of these things can be prevented like i did mention um there is a way that uh, we can use compensating security control controls to inhibit or limit how a random user like i am is able to use whatsapp as a fishlet to trick my user trust me more than 90 percent of what you saw uh, the user who is not well educated will not pick this. We always insist and push on user education, which is one of the first line of defense over there. The user should be as much as aware as the hackers. It makes it easier for the user to know and understand what the hacker is trying to do when they see something like this. And uh, beyond that, uh, because obviously we know one way or another we're going to find a victim who fall to this. Uh, um, let's not judge. Um, let's also quickly implement an incident response plan and try to manage the incident whatever it is for your company uh please a disclaimer at the closing do not try to use this to fish anybody that's me being very serious okay so uh thanks for your time and i'll see you again in the next recording bye